Senator Rosen. Uh, thank you, Chair Murray. I um, really appreciate holding this very important <coughs> hearing today, and of course the witnesses for all of your work in this area. And so, like so many of us, we're just so worried about our communities and uh, the overdose disparities, especially in Nevada and our Latino communities. Uh, the synthetic fentanyl crisis has gotten worse in recent years in Nevada. It has unfortunately disproportionately impacted our growing Latino population. In fact, between 2019 and 2020, drug overdose deaths amongst Latinos in Nevada increased 120%. And the proportion of those involving fentanyl increased 135%, the highest among any demographic group. And so compounding this problem is a lack of awareness in our Latino community about resources, including, including harm reduction strategies, as well as a shortage of substance abuse disorder providers, particularly culturally competent Spanish-speaking providers. So Dr. Delphin Rittman, what kind of targeted community outreach is SAMHSA doing to ensure Latino communities, uh, not just in Nevada, but across the country, have access to evidence-based substance use disorder resources to help curb addiction, including those harm reduction strategies? Yeah, yeah thank you for that question, Senator Rosen. And, and so this is an area that is a priority uh, for SAMHSA. It's certainly a priority as well within the, the Secretary's overdose prevention strategy. or It's, it's one of the cross-cutting areas that is equity. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that, that we do is we fund the uh, Hispanic and Latino Addiction Technology Transfer Center. Um, what that center does is it provides a broad range of training and technical assistance to providers across the country. Um, that helps to ensure that those providers are able to implement uh, culturally responsive services, services that meet the needs of, of uh, Latino individuals and diverse groups. Uh, and so that training in TA is available across the country. And another area of work we have through our Office of Behavioral Health Equity um, for our new grantees, uh, and actually previous grantees as well, though we've strengthened this program, um, we now do disparity impact statements. Uh, and so grantees have to identify disparity populations that may, they may be serving within their region or area, um, and then identify how that grant will be used to address disparities among those individuals or groups that, where, there, where disparities exist. Uh, and then it, what we've increased is we've now increased and we'll be increasing the technical assistance uh, to, to grantees to ensure that they have the resources and support that they need in terms of addressing the needs of diverse groups. Um, so we're excited about that program. We think that will make a real difference uh, in terms of working across our grant programs uh, to help them to be able to identify uh, disparity populations, but also address those disparities as well to include among Latino uh, individuals. Well, um, that's great that you're doing that, but we know that you need the resources, and that means the workforce. And so while SAMHSA's Minority Fellowship Program, you have made strides in increasing provider diversity and boosting cultural competency and behavioral health. Uh, data suggests that people of color still only constitute a significant minority of the substance abuse disorder workforce. So again, Dr. Delphin Rittman, as a committee seeks to reauthorize and enhance SAMHSA programs this year, I really want to see how we can expand and improve on these minority fellowship programs to bring people into the workforce to ensure we're attracting and retaining these providers, mentoring the next gen of them, and they can better serve the trust of Latinos. Of course, um, all of our minority populations, uh, underserved populations across the nation. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. And, and that is a program, well, for one, I can say this near and dear to my heart. I, I uh, went through the fellowship program, uh, 90 to 93. To, and um, so one thing we're doing to expand that program is to increase the number of um, individuals that can go through at the master's level. Uh, there, are, there are doctoral level uh, fellowships that are provided. I went through the doctoral program, but now we're increasing the, the master's level. That will help to increase the numbers of individuals that are able to uh, begin practicing and begin working in the field sooner. So we're real excited about that. Uh, and we know the program's coming up for authorization. That's some of what we'll use those resources for. Um, other programs we have are around you know, working with HBCUs uh, and, his, and Hispanic serving institutions as well. Uh, around uh, attracting individuals to the behavioral health professions who may be considering behavioral health or, or may be interested in behavioral health. And um, so that is an additional program that works to increase the numbers of individuals uh, you know, from diverse populations who, that are entering uh, the behavioral health fields or individuals interested in working with diverse populations as well. 
Thank you. I think my time's expired. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Kane.